Is the ECG app. <laughs> it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. How many times have you been watching your favorite video and say, gee, I'd like to send that to my friend. How would I do that? Let me show you the best way to do that today. Well, let's watch the video and see. Now, that was a video called the Misunderstood Galaxy Watch 4 that I made last year. The purpose of this video today is to show you the different ways that you can pass on the links to this video if you'd like to share it. So let's have a look at this and see how it's done. Is the ECG app going to diagnose your heart? So this is the screen that we're watching the misunderstood Galaxy Watch 4. And if you come to the top, you'll see here is the URL, which is the link to this video. So what we could do is just take this, we're going to highlight it, and we're going to right click and copy this, and then we're going to come over, and I'm going to send an email to my fan friend Byron and tell him about this great video. So all I have to do is to click paste and copy the URL, and here is the URL of that specific video. Now one of the big advantages of using Gmail with YouTube is that by placing that URL or the web link into our email, after we send it, the receiver gets a clickable link. In other words, this automatically makes a link that you can click and it will take you right to the video. So let's watch how this is done. We now have sent the email and you'll see a uh, clickable link. Let's click this link. And is the ECG app going to diagnose your heart? And here we have the video playing. So that is the first way in which you can send the link to your friend. All right, let's look at the second way. In the email I've shown you now, I've, inc I've added a text saying, Byron, you must watch this great watch video. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to come down now to this little button at the bottom. It says insert link. I'm going to click this. And now I'm going to paste that URL here. We can even test this by clicking this button here. Is the and it will show us that the test is test link is OK. And now I'm going to say OK. And now we have created a clickable link, but it's not. And now we've created a clickable link, but is related to the text that we've put in. So you just click on this text and it will play the video. This is called an embedded link. Lots of fun to do this, and it looks much nicer than the one above. Let's see what it looks like when Byron gets the copy. All right, now we've sent this uh, email to Byron, and you'll see that the uh, this is the URL link, and this is what it looks like. And then this is the embedded link. Click this. So you could click either of these two links, and they will take you directly to the video. All right, let's look at our email again. In this email, I've now added, Byron, watch the below link for a great video. So now I'm going to insert a link below here, but let's go and find out where the link. We've now come over to our video, and I want you to come down to the share option here. We're going to click share, and what we're going to see is this is the I, URL identifier for that video, but there's a unique, if you want, serial number or identifier for that specific video that you'll see after it says YouTube. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to now place this underneath Byron. Now what I want you to look at carefully here is this is an embedded link. In other words, we didn't have to actually embed the link. This is a special link that Google has made available that will automatically embed itself 
into your email. So this is a clickable link. You actually can save some steps. Also, if you come up now to our um, uh, Chrome browser and you click just that link, no www or anything like that, and we hit enter, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find here's the video. So it is a searchable link just by that unique identifier. All right, here are the three ways in which we could send a link. I sort of like the middle one. You can choose on which you prefer. But just remember, if you look at the third option I showed you, this is a unique identifier link that you can use in your website design. And in most cases, just by typing this identifier in, you'll be able to embed the link. All right, let's the fourth way of sending this to Byron. We're going to come back to our video, and as we come down, we're going to see, remember we did the share button before, but now we're going to do the save button. So let's click the save, and this is going to bring up this menu. And I'm going to create a new playlist. So let's click create new playlist, and I'm going to say videos for Byron. We're going to make this unlisted so only um, Byron can see these. And now we're going to go create. And if we go to uh, save the video again now, we will see uh, the videos for Byron. And we're going to click this and click this now. All right, let's go back to the home screen on YouTube. If you come down here on the left side, you're going to see uh, history, videos, keep coming down until we say show more. Let's click this. And here we have our videos for Byron. This is where the playlists are shown. So we're going to click on this one, which is videos for Byron. And you'll see here's our video. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little link here to share. So what we're going to do now is we're going to share the playlist. This is going to be interesting. So I'm going to click this little button here. And this is going to, of course, give me a URL. I'm going to copy this URL. And let's come back to our letter, which we see here. So when we come back to our email that we're sending to Byron, I've now added Byron, keep this link for great watch videos. So instead of him sending him the, the link to the one video, we're going to paste in this link. And once Byron saves this link, any videos that I add to that playlist, Byron automatically will be able to be updated and see. So this way we can send a lot of different videos as we discover them to Byron for great watch videos. Now in the fifth link, you'll see that I've taken and embedded the URL in the fourth link into the sentence. So it now is an embedded link and I think looks a little bit better. I'm not going to go over how to do that as we just did it in the prior link. All right, the sixth way to do this would be to shorten the original URL link up a little bit. And I've used two pieces of software in the past to do this. I've used uh, a Chrome extension called Bitly or one called tinyurl.com. Both of these are free and available as an extension on your browser. Let me show you how uh, to use Bitly. Now I find with the embedding feature that I use in email, I don't often use these programs anymore, but I just wanted to show you how Bitly works it's quite easy, it's free, and let me show you how it can shorten the length of a URL, URL for, your, uh, for your email. All right, here we are back at the misunderstood Galaxy Watch 4, and let's come up. This is the URL that, is, uh, that we're on, and this is what we use to play this particular video. So we're now going to just highlight this, and we're going to come over to this little circle here which is the bit.ly extension that I have installed. We're going to click this, and this is the, uh, the bit.ly uh, 
extension um, that pops up. Uh, now we can title this, and we can title this as the uh, misunderstood, we'll just call it the Galaxy Watch. And I'm going to copy the extension. I'm going to copy this. Uh, this is the shortened URL. I'm going to copy this now. So we're going to take this uh, link we've copied and bring it over here to our uh, email that we're going to send Byron. And we're now going to paste this in. And as you'll see, this uh, this is a shortened this is a shortened uh, URL as compared to this uh, original long link that we have. Uh, and this would, of course, could be uh, embedded into a link as we've shown you before. But this is a way in which you can shorten up the, uh, the link by using uh, Bitly, or you can also use TinyURL. All right, let's look at our final email we're going to send to my friend Byron. You see it, I've done it six ways now. The first is uh, we put the link, the exact URL link of this video, which you'll see uh, here in, in uh, example number one. This is the URL that we copied right from our browser into the email. The second thing uh, we did was then we changed this a bit and we embedded the URL link right into text. So in this case, in number two, we uh, Byron just has to click on the link here and it will um, uh, bring the video right up. In item number three, we use the unique identifier uh, for the um, YouTube video that I showed you where to find. And we just put that in and we saw that it immediately became blue, which made it an embedded link. Pretty cool. We then, um, we then made a playlist in item number four. We made a playlist for Byron in which uh, that video was put in any future videos on watches or whatever I want to put in there. I can just add those and as long as Byron has this link, it will show all the videos. And the fifth way was uh, we embedded that link in four in number five and uh, Byron keep this link for a great watch video. And of course, um, we embedded it in there and Byron just has to click that and it'll take him right to the, um, all the videos that we've put in that playlist. And item six is, of course, we shortened this original URL up with using a, a software called Bitly. And we created this uh, shortened link here. Now, in fact, when you do send this link and you, we do send the email out, it will turn blue and it will be an embedded link automatically with Bitly. Those are the six ways in which we can uh, use links in Gmail. Good morning, friends. I'm Dewey, and my Tech Talk topic for today is 5G Fixed Wireless Access. I ended my last week's Tech Talk, Cellular Phone 5G, hinting that this week I would speak on cellular fixed-based 5G, which is more commonly referred to as 5G Fixed Wireless Access. When I began writing this Tech Talk, I had no idea of the can of worms I'd be opening. Consequently, you're hearing my third rewriting. The reason is that I had understood fixed wireless access as strictly related to cellular, but I learned that it's also very much a part of the technology of WISPs, wireless internet service providers. There are nearly 3,000 entrepreneurial wireless internet service providers in the US who provide access to individual locations using radio waves as the last link typically from fiber optic cable. Their professional association is WISPA.org. WISPA's 1,000 1, members also include the evolving industry that supports fixed wireless broadband connectivity, including equipment suppliers, supported devices, and other components needed to run a successful business. Together, they provide broadband access to over 7 million US customers. Isn't that a surprise? Heading back to cellular 5G, T-Mobile is considered by many as the cellular leader in 5G in the US. But with fixed wireless access, it's a different story. Last week, CNET.com carried an article on T-Mobile's fixed wireless access, which, calls, which it calls 5G home internet, 
that asks the question, can a mobile company meet 5G broadband speeds? T-Mobile launched their 5G home internet just last April, and it's already available to a quarter of the homes in 40 U.S. states. That includes over 600 cities, many of them within rural areas. This makes it the most widely available 5G home internet at present in the U.S. However, it still relies on its 4G LTE service areas, and consequently, its internet speeds are paltry compared to Verizon. T-Mobile has only one fixed wireless access plan, and here's an overview. It costs $50 a month, has no contract, no equipment fee, and no data caps. Maximum speeds are 35 to 115 megabits download and 8 to 23 upload. Also, the company provides a free, relatively sophisticated router. It's called the gate, the T-Mobile Wi-Fi Gateway. It's an eight inch tall combination modem and Wi-Fi 6 router compatible with T-Mobile's networks. It's pictured there at the right. If T-Mobile if internet is available where you live, and if you really don't need those blazingly fast, fast internet speeds, T-Mobile would be a good choice. Remember, it's always best to, if you can, to pick Pick a provider that's got a signal where you spend the most time. Of course, and you don't need a T-Mobile cellular phone subscriber. You need to. You don't need to be a subscriber in order to get T-Mobile home internet. CNET.com also recently published a story on Verizon's 5G uh, fixed wireless access home internet called "Fast Enough for Phones, But What About Your House." Here are some highlights from the article. Verizon's 5G fixed wireless access is currently available in 65 US markets. Subscribers get their internet connection wirelessly from a receiving antenna on their house that picks up Verizon's signal from a nearby neighborhood broadcast antenna. It's way faster than T-Mobile with some regions hitting near gigabit download speeds. Verizon's 5G home internet is mostly centered around the largest metro regions where the population density makes expansion more cost effective. Deploying new cell towers is generally faster than wiring entire regions for fiber. And there's hope that Verizon will be able to bring speedier home internet to underserved parts of the country as well. Cost of Verizon's 5G home internet is $50 a month for Verizon cellular subscribers and $70 a month for others. Also, there are no contracts, no data caps, and the necessary equipment is included free. Also, if your current ISP charges you an early termination fee, Verizon will cover it up to $500, very generous. Those of you who are now offered incentive, and those who subscribe, excuse me, now are offered incentives like Disney Plus and AMC Plus free for a year, a free Google Nest Hub Max, and two months of free Sling TV. Online orders for Verizon Home Internet receive a $100 credit on their bill. I spend a good deal of time researching AT&T's fixed wireless access, and quite simply put, AT&T does not seem to be in the same league as T-Mobile and Verizon. First of all, AT&T's offering is available only in select areas of 21 mostly southeastern states. Secondly, it appears that AT&T has done little, if any, building out of the transmitting antenna towers and home or business reception equipment necessary to be deemed a provider of fixed wireless access. Consequently, we'll move on and take a look at what's happening in Canada. 5G fixed wireless access is available in Canada as well, but primarily through wireless internet service providers. Rogers is an exception, offering unlimited rural fixed wireless access internet broadcast from towers to a receiving antenna installed on homes. It's pricey. It costs $100. $100 a month for 25 megabits per second down and five megabits uh, up, and there's no cap. Not terribly fast, but there's talk of it doubling. Telus Mobility offers their smart hub 
pictured at the right, saying it provides fixed high-speed internet access for rural households. They go on saying, plug the TELUS Smart Hub into a power outlet, insert an active SIM card, and get access to high-speed 3G HSPE, HSPA, excuse me, internet connection and voice services within minutes. Note that TELUS called it fixed high-speed internet access and that it featured high-speed 3G HSPA internet connection. Well, HSPA is high-speed packet access, a third-generation mobile broadband communication technology that offers a maximum of 14.4 megabit per second. I guess that ain't quite high-speed, huh? Obviously, what TELUS offers is not 5G cellular fixed, wire, fixed wireless access, but their own service as a WISP, a wireless internet service provider. A third quarter report by preseam.com titled Bridging the Digital Divide, Wireless Internet Service Providers in Canada and Their Contribution stated that Canada consistently ranks among the top 15 countries in the world when it comes to fixed broadband speeds. The report went on to say that unfortunately, this doesn't include all Canadians. There are many regions and communities in the country that don't enjoy fast home internet access. This has led to a widespread digital divide across Canada, which significantly limits growth, opportunities, and prosperity for many, according to the report. Fiber to the home is how 35% of Canadian households currently access the internet though approximately 1 million Canadians still don't have access to broadband, the situation is gradually improving, with 26% of rural households now relying solely on fixed wireless internet access to me for broadband. Preseam.com concluded by stating that there have been numerous advancements in fixed wireless access technology over the last decade. As a result, Wireless internet service providers can now provide fiber-like internet speeds to customers. These speeds range from a low of 25 megabits per second all the way up to plans that offer speeds of one gigabit per second in some areas. Ron Brown likely enjoys his one gigabit service because of one of these wisps. Well, that's my Tech Talk story for today. And unless you find fault, I'm sticking with it. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe. And the good Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Website of the week number seven. I'm Huey Poplock. Today we're going to talk about this person does not exist. Which one of these are not real people, but were computer generated? On a scrap piece of paper, mark the numbers down. I'm going to show you several slides. Here's the next page. Mark down any you think might be fake. Again, mark down any numbers of any that you think might be fake. And there's one more. So, how many did you get? One per page or five per page? More than five per page? Well, the answer is all of them are fake. Yep, even me. All of these pictures were generated by computers and not pictures of real people. Generative adversarial network. Here's the definition. Generative Adversial Networks, GANs, are algorithmic architectures that use two neural networks pitting one against the other, thus the adversarial, in order to generate new synthetic instances of data that can pass for real data. They are used widely in image generation, video generation, and voice generation. GANs were introduced in a paper by Ian Goodfellow and other researchers at the University of Montreal, including Yoshua Benjo in 
2014, referring to GAN's Facebook's AI research director, Jan Lacoon, called the adversarial training the most interesting idea in the last 10 years. GAN's potential for both good and evil is huge because they can learn to mimic any distribution of data. That is, GANs can be taught to create worlds eerily similar to our own in any domain. Images, music, speech, prose. They are robot artists in a sense, and their output is impressive, poignant even. But they can also be used to generate fake media content and are the technology underpinning deep flakes. In a surreal turn, Christie sold a portrait for $432,000 that had been generated by a GAN based on open source code written by Robbie Barat of Stanford. Like most true artists, he didn't see any of the money, which instead went to the French company Avias.o. In 2019, DeepMind showed that variational autoencoders, or VAEs, could outperform GANs on face generation. If you're interested in how all this works, take a look at the following articles. And these articles will be listed below the video. Now, some good uses of GANs pictures, test websites, test or demo social media accounts, presentations, photos for PowerPoint or Google Slides, or maybe perhaps writing a book or story, need photos of people without getting signed releases, and, of course, there are many other uses. Now, there's some bad uses of GANs pictures. For a fake website, fake profile for a dating site, fake identity, and, again, more. Send this to a friend and let them try to figure out who the family is. Those were taken from the pictures that I showed you earlier. So, this has been... The website of the week, number seven, this person does not exist. I'm Huey Poplock. Mm -hmm.